Welcome back, everybody, to the Marketing Rules Podcast. Uh, I am joined today by Stephen O'Donnell for a bit of a kind of a, a Nora's 20th anniversary roundup, I guess. Um, roundup recap. Yeah, yep. what a, yeah however, however we want to kind of put it. Because obviously the, uh, the 20th anniversary of Nora Awards uh, were yesterday. Um, yep. And congratulations to all the winners and everybody who was kind of nominated. But what mm. I thought we could do today would be just kind of look a little bit kind of go back in time it's 20, in the midst 20 years of time <laughs> and is that the scooby-doo uh, <laughs> um and uh and kind of kind of see what the progression has been and uh, hopefully there has been some progression and kind of uh, on on mm-hmm. the way that the kind of uh the kind of recruitment online slash kind of recruitment websites have moved on in those 20 years and because you're the yeah. you'll have seen this happen it, you every year you'll have kind of judges and seen this incrementally kind of change over the years or maybe not I'm that old. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's kind of. So when you first started doing the Norris kind of twenty years ago, you know, it was it was wasn't really anything around at that time that was kind of judging that was with having websites judged by the users, right? That was the that's mm. the big thing with the Norris. So yeah. What was the state of play with those kind of websites twenty years ago? I mean, were they? I imagine them being terrible, if I honest, mm. but probably yeah. In retrospect, they probably weren't that bad. Well, they, they were very good for their time and they were of their time. Uh, 20 years ago, in the year 2000, uh, remember in the, in the lead up to the year 2000, there was what was known as the millennium bug, where people were panicking a little that the world was going to stop because everything was on computer now. Uh, and if, uh, if, the, if the clocks didn't recognize the year 2000, then nothing would, would happen. And such was the misunderstanding or the, <clears throat> the poor understanding of, of how computers worked uh, mm. that uh, people thought that was a real thing. As it turns out, uh, a load of people made a load of money from fixing computers that didn't need to be fixed. But uh, my point is, is that the internet was still really young. Uh, we'd had five years of job boards, but... Uh, the five years of job boards and those job boards would be the likes of job serve and job sites and, and total jobs and, and, and a couple of others. Uh, those were uh, started around 95, 96, and there were others that appeared in between times. But <clears throat> it was still the case that uh, most people, most candidates and most employers had not fully experienced job boards. It was That was not the default way of searching for a job mm-hmm. or it was just coming in. And there were certain sectors where, where there was an uptick uh, or an uptake uh, really quickly. So the IT sector uh, w- would be first to embrace that and JobServe was at the front of that. So the, uh, the, the, the type of job boards that you had at the time, they didn't have to be that good to stand out. Uh, they, they simply had to exist in the first place. And for the most part, they weren't doing anything technologically fancy. Uh, they were replicating what was happening in lineage adverts in newspapers. Uh, so back in the 90s, when I was you know, recruiting as a, as a coalface recruiter, I, I'd be advertising every Friday in the Glasgow Herald, and I might have three to 10 separate lineage adverts for jobs advertised in the Herald every Friday. And the, the thing about advertising the newspapers was the more lines you took, the more it cost you, they, they charge per line. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, you would hope that your audience would be buying the Glasgow Herald that Friday who would see your advert. So you're, you're hoping to reach uh, as, as, as many people as possible. But if, if your ad was costing you 60 or 70 pounds, you were hoping that would be getting to the person that you were looking for. Uh, in those days, Candidates, for the most part, knew that if they wanted a job in a certain sector, they would buy this newspaper on that day, and those jobs would be advertised. So there was a there was a place to go. There was a there was a focal point, and uh, the, the, the kind of a tacit agreement that uh, we're all going to meet up here every Friday and you know discuss what jobs are available. Now, uh, when we switched to uh, the online uh, job boards, obviously vacancies are advertised all day, twenty four hours a day. Mm-hmm. The cost of placing an advert on an, uh, uh, the, the equivalent of a lineage advert on a, a job board would maybe be around about £10 per job per week uh, for agencies. Uh, and, and I should say also, it, it followed on from, uh, from lineage adverts in newspapers where recruitment agencies got far better rates than the employers did because <clears throat> re- recruitment agencies had 
maybe 10 times as many jobs to advertise uh, and they would be advertising all the time so they would be looking for a, a yeah. volume discount if you like so a lot of the a lot of the the the, the ways of billing the ways of working uh, were replicated in uh, in online job boards uh, and it wasn't especially interactive a job was put up if you wanted to apply uh, you, you were you were often at the bottom of the the job advert you would have the email address to click that would you know you would send your application off uh, there wasn't always a, a registration process where you would register with that job board. So yeah, the, the, they were relatively straightforward. And candidates weren't expecting more at the time. Candidates were used to newspapers. They were used to, uh, you know, adverts in, uh, uh, in, in, in publications that they bought, whether it be trade magazines or newspapers, and then have to go and send off a letter or fax their CV or maybe phone for an application form. Uh, and even though, you know, in, by the 2000s, many people would have an email address. Not everyone had an email address. So when you were asking people to apply, they might be, they might be emailing from their sister's email address or their brother's, and, uh, and they would have a CompuServe email address that was, uh, you know, 10572 at CompuServe.com. That, you know, the, the, uh, those were the days uh, where uh, that, that was expected. Everyone had a, a Hotmail account or a, 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 a what, was the, uh, what was the big one? It was a free, free serve. Free serve. So people yeah. had a free, free serve account. So <clears throat> the, the, the ability for candidates to respond and the, the way that they do now uh, just wasn't there. You have to remember also that the bandwidth of internet was considerably different then. Uh, there was a website that came out, I think around 2000, it was the, the, the dot-com bubble, uh, called boo or boohoo.com. Uh, and it had amazing 3D graphics where, you know, a pair of trainers would spin around in 3D, but you had to wait an afternoon before that image downloaded that you could then spin it around. So uh, the, the, the technology wasn't really up with what people expected to happen. Now, when I started the, the NORAS, the National Online Recruitment Awards, uh, it was on the back of a website I'd built called alljobsuk.com. And All Jobs UK was, uh, it was basically a portal to everywhere that advertised jobs. So that could be a, a, a job board. It could be publications, trade publications, newspapers. It could be uh, uh, employers themselves or, uh, of course, recruitment agencies. In those days, it wasn't obligatory that every every agency had their own website. Uh, you would look bad if you didn't have one, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't crazy. It wasn't unheard of. Uh, and even if you did have one, it would be a, a couple of pages. It would literally just be a brochure website with, you know, we are this, give us a call. Uh, and and really, would they have their, their jobs posted on their, their agency website? So, what has happened in the space of the last twenty years is, is to to online recruitment is what has happened with the development of the internet. Uh, and I should say that that in the earliest days of the internet, the industries that uh, that caught on and moved at speed were uh, uh, number one uh, the smart industry, uh, where you you you. you pay to see naked ladies do things they shouldn't. Uh, and uh, the recruitment industry where you would have uh, jobs advertised uh, and, uh, and, and, and going beyond that, uh, other kinds of lineage adverts for cars and homes and so <laughs> on. So those were the areas that were easy to, to imagine could be replicated from newspapers to online. And the idea of interactivity wasn't really a thing. But of course, as the internet developed, if people were, were shopping on Amazon, which they were in the year 2000, then they were realizing that uh, uh, it, they could come to expect a certain way for things to work on a website. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a bit of blue text is a link. Uh, if there's a, a, a box with a graphic with, a, you know, with what seems like a word in it that, that's a button, then if you click that, something will happen. So people were visually learning this is what a button looks like. Yeah, this is how like to a new navigate kind of digital language, website. wasn't it, basically, mm -hmm. that they were kind of learning yeah. it. Yeah. So, so the the, the niceties or, or the, uh, the 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 way that you use websites was being formed, and these companies were writing the rule book, and job boards were doing that too. They were part of that mix. Uh, but all of these sites are affected by each other. So whether there's Amazon or eBay or YouTube or uh, uh, you know in, in, in recent years Netflix and so on, then people get used to how to navigate those sites, and they also get used to the interactivity of those sites and what this guy can be doing for them. Now, uh, in the earliest days of, well, before the internet even, uh, candidates 
for the most part, uh, expected to have to do what they were asked to do if they wanted to apply for a job. Uh, it might be, you know, send a letter with your CV, with a cover letter, you know, come along for an interview and put the appointed hour and so on and so on. And when when candidates went online, uh, again, the rules have been written by other people, uh, the people who had set up job boards. This is what you do. This is how you do it. And candidates would go along with that. Now, there's still a large element of that these days where candidates are being asked to jump through hoops. But in recent times, candidates are pushing back. Uh, and it's not so much that they're saying no and, you know, sending off, uh, you know, uh, angry emails. They're just not coming to your website anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the pushback is that they, they don't walk into your shop. The, 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 the footfall goes elsewhere. And uh, uh, candidates' expectations are and have been raised every year. Uh, in the past 20 years. So with the notice, in the first year of the notice, uh, <clears throat> we had a range of, and in fact, the, 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 the awards that we had yesterday that we gave out prizes for yesterday, the award titles and the categories are exact same as they were then. And I should say that when I set up the notice in the first place, it was actually, it was a marketing exercise. Uh, the website I'd set, I'd set up, uh, there wasn't any, any other out there. And, and we, we led candidates to where jobs were being advertised. Uh, but before that, candidates wouldn't know which job boards there were, because mm -hmm. there were new ones appearing all the time. They wouldn't know which agencies had a website or what the website was, or employers. So coming to uh, our website, they could say, well, I'm looking for a job in engineering in Dundee, or I'm looking for a job as an architect in Portsmouth. Uh, and they would find employers, agencies, job boards, publications that would have those kinds of vacancies. Yeah. So. What I decided was those categories uh, of companies who were posted on, on on that website, we would give awards for the best websites. Uh, and because I knew that whenever you were, whenever you were, you, you had a, a voting uh, system online, and I, I'm kind I'm kind of thinking of the likes of Big Brother and so on, then it's quite easy to automate ten thousand votes for this or twenty thousand votes for that, and whoever the company is that says, well, the most votes gets to be the winner. They're then obligated to give the prize to the company who had uh, a developer make a little program that made, you know, 100,000 votes for them. And it wouldn't necessarily go to the best one. So I thought, well, the people who were, you know, we want to know their opinions would be job seekers, would be candidates. Uh, I'm not interested in what uh, other job boards think of other job boards or agencies and so on. Those industry uh, awards events where people are slapping each other in the back and congratulating themselves on a, on a job well done, they kind of leave me cold. And, and, and with all due respect, I've been to more than a few of the, uh, the, the advertising agency events where uh, there'll be awards for I don't know, best creative uh, in an advert that was filmed uh, at the back of someone's garden down a hole, uh, in uh, all set in the colour purple. And you think, well, how obscure can this be? But these awards are are, are really given out, and you, you you wouldn't believe them sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and also, I also I always think it's really hard to how can you judge one of these things against another because they're not the same thing, and and and. Uh, so what I, what I thought was, let's ask candidates, very simply, uh, which, which generalist job board that has jobs across all categories uh, do you like best? Uh, as simple as that. And tell us what you think uh, the reason why that would be. Or a specialist job board, or an agency website, large or small, or an employer, large or small, or newspapers. Which ones do you like best? And, uh, uh, and those will be nominations, not votes. So the nomination essentially brings a site to our attention. And what we'll then do is we'll then visit all of those sites uh, and, and view them and assess them from a candidate's perspective. Uh, obviously, I have a lot of experience in recruitment, so I would, I would hope that my experience would be relevant here. Uh, but I also got other judges who had worked in either HR or traditional recruitment or online recruitment uh, or, or other related areas that had expertise uh, to, uh, to, to bring to bear. But the, the key thing, key instruction they would be given is go and assess these sites as if you were a candidate. Now, one of the uh, one of the most common tips that anyone who has a website has agencies, employers, and so on is go and apply for vacancy on your own website. 
Mm -hmm. uh, see how easy that is. Uh, and it's usually the case that people haven't done it for a long time. And when they do go and do it, it's much more difficult than they imagined. And <laughs> yeah. the, 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 they, usually, they usually decide there and then we're going to fix this. It's, uh, it's, it's not good enough. So uh, when, when our judges go and do that, they often see, and they often saw back then, really dreadful candidate experience. Uh, companies who had, uh, you know, the biggest brands in the world, uh, but when it came to the candidate experience, it seemed like it was left to, you know, someone to, to work out in the back of a cigarette packet. Uh, it, it, was, it was really pretty amateur. So many of the nominations that we had in the earliest days, uh, they, they didn't make it to be finalists because they were just, you, you could straight away put a line through them. They were, they were pretty sure. Yeah, I, I remember, uh, I remember applying for kind of jobs back then. Um, and a lot of time it felt just like a bit of a war of attrition, you know, the way mm. to try and filter out kind of the candidates that you didn't want was just make the whole process as bureaucratic and laborious as possible and not really yeah. being particularly intelligent about it. And that yeah. basically you just, you were hoping that, that the, the ones you, the candidates would give up basically before they completed the entire process. Yeah, well, it, it was kind of an assault course. Uh, you know, wh whoever made it to the end uh, got an interview. And do you really want to, do you want to hire the most determined candidate or the most skilled candidate at the job you're looking to, to hire? Because some, some jobs, uh, uh, in fact, I, I'd say all jobs, most jobs rather, uh, they call for skills that none of which are determination and perseverance and uh, you know uh, so if, if you're looking to fill a, a sales job then then fine but uh, if you're looking for an accountant or an architect or a design engineer then those are not part of the skill set so make it easy uh, and also make it easy for candidates to self-select themselves for that job you don't companies often i say complain but they, they often say that uh, we get too many candidates applying who are irrelevant for this job uh they're they're, they're, they're clearly applying for 50 jobs that morning and any job they see they send off a, a cv for uh, and and the largest reason for that is that the candidates don't know what you're looking for and they assume you don't mm -hmm. either so and is that something harm? you still see now or you still kind of or is it is that being kind of is that relegated to the past you think Website gets, websites and particularly employers are getting much wiser to that, and, and agencies as well. Uh, so if you can if you can give more information, because right now candidates want to research jobs and employers and prospects and all of the things to do with the job before they make an application. Uh, so if you can give them the information beforehand, they will self-select themselves in or out of that job. And in doing so, what you'll find is that uh, uh, the irrelevant candidates will see, no, that's not the job for me. Especially if you use video uh, and candidates can see the hiring manager and the work environment and, and understand more about the company, then people who are never going to be uh, keen to join in the first place, they won't be applying. But what you'll also do is the candidates who were never going to apply before, maybe they had preconceptions about your company, maybe uh, they, they, they just didn't think it was the sort of place for them. If you can share more information with them, then you'll get people applying who were never going to apply before. The, the thing about a basic text advert that we had on, in newspapers in the 90s, maybe the earliest job boards, is that no, no amount of text in an advert for a job really convinced someone to apply where they had a, a negative preconception about your company. You're not going to overcome objections in a text advert. Uh, it's just not going to happen. You can use graphics, you can use photographs, uh, you can, you can, you know, all, all of these branding tools that you can use. And certainly if you use video, that, that really helps. But uh, uh, static black text on a white page uh, never persuaded anyone. So that's interesting. So that kind of, kind of brings me on to the kind of next thing I wanted to talk about, which is what are the, um, the kind of innovations and the things and the trends that you're seeing now uh, especially across the kind of finalists. I mean, it might not be in all the kind of, in, 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 in every kind of category, but I mean, mm. I know you're a big proponent of kind of video. Um, yeah. Uh, and is that something that you're seeing in, in, you know, more and more in the kind of the finalists? Uh, yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm seeing more and more use of video by, uh, by agencies and employers. Uh, I'm seeing that job boards are reluctant to allow videos or to encourage videos. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, I, I could guess that, that largely the job boards that there are out there are, and they've gone through the phase of being owned by 
ironically, newspaper publications. Newspapers were really slow to get into the job board market in the first place. Uh, but once they realized they'd lost all their, their classified business, they then bought up all the job boards, uh, bar a couple of them. And now what we found is that those newspapers uh, didn't really know how to run a job board and sold them on to. So DMGT, I think, bought uh, uh, job sites and, uh, and a number of other job boards, and they've, they've sold them on. So the, now, the ownership of these job boards is now mm-hmm. two or three generations in. Uh, and the people who run them now are, are really smart, are really clever. Uh, they know, you know acres about uh, you know, what's going on in the recruitment marketplace. But to an extent, the the oldest of the job boards out there have a they have a legacy product people expect it to 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 do and behave in a certain way and the revenues that they have come in are predicated on the way they've always done things uh, ironically when they were new to the market and to the you know the early 2000s uh, they were young they were agile they were they were challenging the norms and so on whereas they are the establishment now uh, so I, I, I believe that each one of these job boards should have teams within those companies who are, in a way, they're given the task of, of putting themselves out of business by making a new job board that does things in a different way that will, that will throw out the old types of job boards and usher in a, a, new, a new dawn. Now, that, that, that's kind of a pipe dream, if I'm honest. Uh, they have to evolve rather than change. Uh, but uh, you, I, I think you must be seeing some of that evolution, though, right? In some of these kind of winners, there must be kind of trends and things yes. that you're seeing that are, are leaning yeah. towards that now. So, so on 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 video, uh, Monster have incorporated. There was a company I was doing work with last year, uh, Video My Job, and, and Monster took a white label uh, version of Video My Job and incorporated it into their platform. Uh, so everyone who has an, a Monster account can advertise, uh, can can add uh, video to any job advert. Uh, CB Library uh, is enabled for video job adverts. Uh, it's not a simple and straightforward way of doing it. So if you're multi-posting through somewhere like uh, Edibu or Broadbean, then uh, it's, it's not straightforward to send through the link to your video file uh, that then gets uploaded with your job. Uh, whereas with Monster, it's, it's, it's built in. Uh, and there are other companies who are doing that. So, and, and, and using video should be a no brainer. Uh, so uh, what we found is that some companies have extraordinary lift in the caliber, the measurable caliber of candidates who apply when there's video involved in the job. And you can still have your text there as well, that's fine. But yeah. if, you, if you remember that more than, more than 50, certainly usually more than 60% of anyone who goes to a job board is doing so on a small screen, on a, on a phone usually. Uh, then, and, and they're doing that because they get the job alerts uh, through their phone. So your email comes to your phone, you click on the link, it opens up in your phone. Uh, who would have thought? But when you're looking at a job, a job ad on the, advert on the phone and it's just acres of black text on a white screen, who's going to scroll? People just don't scroll these days. People don't, they, they don't read all the detail. They skim. Uh, and that's why you get irrelevant applications because they've given a quick skim, they fire off a CV and, uh, and who's happy with that? Not the employer and certainly ultimately not the candidate. Uh, making applications easy is good, but you should make applications easy and accurate. Uh, so yeah, using video, you can absolutely do that. And also, I, I bear saying that uh, using video is fantastic for uh, the employment of, of, of more women in jobs that might not, you might, you might not expect more women to be applying for, uh, such as engineering and STEM. Uh, and for diversity, if you're looking for diverse candidates to apply, when you use video and the hiring manager uh, looks like you, or you can see the work environment behind them includes a multitude of people clearly from different backgrounds, then uh, you can picture yourself in that job. And what that tends to mean is that more women apply for jobs uh, uh, because they can see, well, that's a place I could be working in. Uh, and more diverse people will apply because it's literally being demonstrated on it, on on job adverts where you you say we are an, an equal opportunity employer or we 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 and you've got a mission statement to do with how diverse you are or you aim to be. You can say that to you blue in the face, but if you put it on a video, people believe it. So yeah, going beyond the use of video, uh, there are ways in which you can be not only using video but capturing the data that comes back from the activity surrounding 
uh, people viewing your videos, you can see that they've watched the first 10 seconds, they might have watched 10 seconds and then skip forward to the last 10 seconds. You can you can have those stats, you can know those, you can know the hot spots in your video where people are uh, uh, watching and paying attention and, uh, and, and, and so on. So it's, it's an entirely new medium that you can do that with. And the other area that I would get on to in terms of evolution of, uh, of, of understanding how job boards are moving forward uh, is, uh, is the use of AI. Uh, there's another area I might mention later, which is programmatic advertising, but that's, that's not really my area of expertise, but we'll come on to that. But in, in terms of AI, and I had a long discussion last week with the uh, with the people at uh, at CB Library, uh, and and, and they, they they've been don't get me wrong they've been doing this with with all job boards for a long time or at least they've been trying to do it. But with AI, you can if you have a, a large database of say millions of candidates, uh, then within that data there are amazing patterns. Uh, so if if you say I've got ten million people. Uh, on my database, they're all people in the UK, uh, and I can see where everyone is working right now. I can see where they worked a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, uh, and I can see the path that that person took. They went from this company to that company to that company in this space of time. They were promoted from that job to that job to that job. Uh, they went to this university uh, and, and so on. When you can see retrospectively all that information in the past, to an extent, you can use that to predict mm -hmm. what's going to happen in the future. So you, you could say to, uh, you know, employer Z, uh, you're looking for someone to do this job. And the last three people that you hired came from uh, this other employer or went to this university or had a career path that went from here to here to here. And then you hired them. So that that's really valuable information for the employer to know, to anticipate where people are coming from, not only today, but uh, you might know that in two years' time, you'll expect to be hiring for a job that someone out there, you could put a pin on them and say, let's watch this candidate because if they do this, that and the other, then we want to speak to them. So if they go and add to their, their, their qualifications with an MBA, if they get promoted uh, or they, they, they move to another company, then that's, that's another tick in your algorithm that says this candidate is of interest to us. So you should be able to watch the market in a much more three-dimensional way. You should be able to understand the market. Every employer, uh, pretty much, uh, every employer knows on January 1st this year, we expect to hire, it might be it might be five or 100 or 5,000 uh, staff this year. Uh, and you can break it down to the type of staff that you expect to hire, where you expect to hire, what skills and so on. So you, you should be able to anticipate most of these things. And, and people say, oh, it's a surprise when someone leaves and they, you know, they handed the notice on a Friday. Uh, a smart switched on employer should be anticipating this. They should have their own form of AI that tells them that someone's been working for us for, for uh, four years. They haven't had a step up. They've not had a promotion or a pay rise. And they've just, you know, the, the, their family circumstances have changed. It's quite likely that this person could be looking for a job elsewhere unless we do something to satisfy them here. Uh, and that kind of that kind of uh, learned intelligence uh, should be it should be happening within organisations, but it certainly can be happening within job boards. And job boards are in a position to be smart about how they target individuals for adverts for particular jobs and employers mm -hmm. in certain locations. They also know, of course, uh, the ebb and flow of different disciplines, different skills uh, in the country. They might know that, uh, you know, Aberdeen, for example, is a big oil and gas town. Uh, but when the market rises and falls in the, in the price of oil, the jobs come and go. Uh, Oxford and Cambridge might be hotbeds for uh, not only universities, but for uh, 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 new companies, new tech companies coming up with new types of products or pharmaceutical uh, products and so on. So if they are able to, to detect the growth of companies and and, and where they're finding their, their staff from, uh, then they can be much more tuned into the market. I remember, sorry, I, I, I remember uh, maybe about 10 years ago now, I had a conversation with Keith Potts from, uh, from Jobsite. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but the information that they were able to understand about the job market then uh, was, the, the, I think they got, they got a string of uh, really, clever people and they was able to 
match what was happening in the marketplace, uh, the, the shares marketplace. And to an extent, they could predict what was likely to be happening in the marketplace because they, showed, they saw companies grow uh, and contract, uh, mm -hmm. certain skills uh, move with them. Uh, and that sort of information was really valuable to the marketplace, I think, to the extent that they had, they had uh, a product that they, they sold to uh, market traders. Now, that was years ago. Uh, we know so much more now. And the more data you have, the more evident the patterns in, the, in that data can be. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to be looking at, you know, what the CV of Stephen O'Donnell, for example, and finding out exactly, you know, where he lives, what he does and so on. Does he like Heinz tomato soup for his lunch uh, or does he get out of the left side of bed? But in aggregate, that information is really, in, uh, is, is really informative. So the other thing that you mentioned uh, was programmatic advertising. And I know you said you weren't necessarily an expert, but I think um, I think most people listening probably have got a general idea of what of, of the kind of principles. Uh, and mm. so this is something that you are kind of also seeing that's that's coming up. Uh, yes. Uh, and it's, so programmatic advertising does tie in with AI. And uh, uh, the, the reason I, I, I go a bit cold on it, it's not that I don't understand it. It's, it's, it's in the... It's then the non-human part of recruitment. Mm -hmm. uh, is th there are no people involved in, in programmatic advertising. Uh, essentially, it's a bidding market. It's a, it's a marketplace where you buy eyeballs for your adverts. And the more targeted the, the adverts and the more performance your adverts get, uh, then obviously the cost per click goes up. And, uh, and, and there are marketplaces for your job advert to appear in the right place to get the best performance and so on. And if you, if, if you liken it to... Uh, uh, Google AdWords, uh, uh, you know, when, when you're, you're advertising on Google, uh, they don't necessarily put the, the company that pays the most at the top of the search results. Uh, they pay the company that, that in, in combination with paying the most, is most attractive to the people who search for that search phrase. Uh, because the more people that click it, uh, then that adds up in terms of more revenue for Google than, than one company that say, we'll pay a thousand pounds per click. The company that pays five pounds per click, but gets 10,000 clicks is the better bet. Yeah. So in, in programmatic advertising, it's, uh, it, it's an algorithm that's, that's, that's behind all that. And yes, it's about targeting. Now targeted advertising, I love. And, and what I'm seeing with, with job boards now is much more, uh, hyper-targeted uh, uh, experiences when you go to the website. Obviously, when you go to a website that you've been on before, if you've logged in before and it recognizes you, then, you know, hi, Stephen. When I go to Amazon, it knows it's me. When I go to Amazon, it suggests products that I might want to buy. Uh, and uh, it's usually pretty accurate. When I'm on Facebook and products come up, aside from wish.com, then uh, for the most part, uh, they're fairly relevant. Uh, if I see an advert that's very closely targeted to the sort of things I'm interested in. It doesn't feel like an advert. It doesn't feel like spam. Uh, it can often be a delight, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, and if if job adverts are very accurately targeted at me, then I won't feel like I'm being bombarded with things I've no interest in, in because they know that I'm interested in them. Uh, so the, the, the better companies are getting at that, uh, the more that's going to be good for, uh, for, for candidates. Uh, candidate... Uh, you might know a company called Candidate ID. Mm -hmm. Candidate aware. ID. I'm aware of their work. Are, are, yes. <laughs> yeah. So Candidate ID are in Glasgow, and in many ways, what they do is similar to HubSpot, where uh, and HubSpot. Anyone who's involved in marketing will understand what you can do with that. Where you can you can learn about your audience. Uh, you can respond to them by each person or you could segment the marketplace and so on, and you can give them exactly what they're looking for, I, I, and you can push them up to the point where you're not annoying them and stop sending them any, any more at the point at which you might be annoying the hell out of someone. But basically you're, you're, you're using technology to help persuade someone or put a gem of an idea into their head and it grows and you're there for when they realize, oh, I really do want to buy a new car or whatever. Uh, and, uh, and Candidate ID does a lot of similar things where they're able to monitor the behavior of candidates who have in some way interacted with a company. And it might be that they've visited the website. It might be that they've received and opened an email. They might have clicked on a link. They may have followed that link and then looked at two or three pages on the website. So each, each one of these uh, uh, activities can be scored and can tell you that this candidate is hot or cold, uh, ready to be approached, uh, and, and so on. Uh, and 
Of course, with GDPR these days, candidates can opt out at any point. But uh, essentially what, what they're able to do with their clients or on behalf of their clients is learn about their audience and respond to their audience in a way that their audience will appreciate, uh, but not get annoyed. Uh, if, if, you simply, if you simply send adverts out to everyone in the world for you know, some new Ford car, then lots of people will be annoyed. But if, if, if you only sent it to the people who were going, definitely going to be interested in it, then they'd be quite chuffed with that. Uh, I, I think it was, was it Henry Ford that said, uh, you know, I, I, I spend X amount on advertising and I, I, I waste 50% of it. I just don't know which 50%. These days with programmatic advertising, then the amount that you're wasting, the theory is, uh, is, is a, a, a very small proportion. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it decreases over time as well, as well. And so you can, um, you, you just get more and more efficient at it. Um, yeah, Stephen. Before I let you go, um, can we run through the the list of, of winners if you've got them to hand? Because that would be really good to. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm I'm happy to tell you a little, little bit about them. So, yes. uh, the in order that they were announced uh, yesterday, uh, best innovation uh, and. Innovation in, in online recruitment goes to a company who are doing things differently, a company who would uh, approach a problem in a, in a different way uh, and are challenging the norms. So the, the winner of best innovation, and, and incidentally, one of the finalists, uh, and people raised an eyebrow for, for that, was, uh, was Zoom. Uh, so innovation in online recruitment, and people say, well, Zoom's not a recruitment product. Well, every, every recruitment company in the world are using Zoom. Mm. Uh, and Zoom have, uh, last November, Zoom had about 10 million active monthly users. Uh, right now, it's more like 350 million uh, active monthly users uh, on Zoom, uh, and their share price has rocketed. Uh, so uh, Zoom has also changed the product uh, or evolved the product quite a bit through the year uh, that really works for recruitment. So they were in there. But the winner uh, for best innovation uh, was a company called Red Wigwam. Red Wigwam are kind of a hybrid, uh, not a recruitment company and not job board. Uh, but somewhere in between, and and and, and there's also uh, there's an element of, uh, of 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 social inclusion in what they do. Uh, so uh, very flexible company, and and really challenging the norms. And when companies do that, they're taking a risk. They're taking a risk that they might fall flat in the back, that the audience won't uh, won't won't respond to, whether it's employers or candidates. But uh, from what I know, candidates are are loving what they do. Uh, they, they they recruit in volume for uh, for a large number of uh, of, of employers. Uh, best newcomer. Best newcomer went to Derbyshire Constabulary. Uh, now, the last public service, uh, public, public sector winner uh, of an award in the Norris was West Midlands Police. So for Derbyshire Constabulary to, to win this is quite a thing. And it, again, the award is best newcomer. And you, you must think, well, they've been around for longer than a couple of years. But their website is, was only built last year. Uh, the new website for newcomer uh, is what's being recognized there. And it's a fantastic website. I, I, I would encourage anyone to go and have a look at Derbyshire Police. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great website for, uh, for, as an example for public sector recruitment and, in, and, and explaining about what they do and how they do it. Uh, next, employment advice website. Uh, the winner here was Debut Careers. Now, Debut Careers actually won an award three years ago uh, for Best Newcomer. Uh, so Best Employment Advice website. Debut are heavily involved in the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, modern apprenticeship uh, and, and uh, early learning uh, marketplace and working closely with uh, employers on that. Uh, and they have a fantastic uh, uh, element of the site, which is about uh, advising people on uh, career paths. Uh, so debut are uh, you know, really quite unique in that regard. And there's always a lot of competition in that, that, site, that, that, that award. Employment advice is often uh, overlooked by a lot, a lot of the job boards, a lot of the big job boards, they'll do something on it, but not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this case, Debut do it extraordinarily well. Uh, best trade publication was Nursing Times Jobs. Obviously, nursing uh, and the NHS and anything to do with healthcare is big this year. Uh, so Nursing Times Jobs uh, has been, has been. I know that they've been crazy busy all year for obvious reasons. Uh, best consumer publication went to Guardian Jobs. The Guardian have won that award more than any other publication. Uh, they, they not only have a job board, but they have an immense uh, uh, advice section mm -hmm. on you know, what to do, how to do it, and, and so on. So Guardian are terrific there. Best SME employer went to McEldowie. Now, 
SME employer is is up to an employer up to the size of 500 staff. So it, it could be a quite big employer, but McIldowie uh, are the winners there. And most of the finalists in that category, because we're in the recruitment sector, are actually small recruitment companies. So uh, McIldowie, a small recruitment company, uh, they're not tiny. Uh, I think they have, I think they have about 100 staff, but don't quote me on that. But Michael Dowie won this award last year for Best SME Employer, uh, and they've won awards before for uh, Best Small Recruitment Agency. So uh, a, a terrific company, and I know that they're continually pushing to do better all the time. Uh, now, our Best Major Employer website was won by Games Workshop. There was a lot of competition in uh, in, in this, this award. And I have to say, uh, uh, the judges aren't all of the, uh, of the same view. Uh, uh, and we, you know, we often argue over, uh, you know, what, or, or score differently on on different websites. Games Workshop uh, is uh, is a great example of a company living their brand uh, and showing their brand through their websites. Uh, they are uh, a, a fantastic company to to work for. Obviously, they've had the challenge to, this year. Any company in retail would do, but another another company in that uh, that award uh, was uh, GVC, which is a parent company of. I think most of the, the betting uh, organizations in yep. the UK, so yep. Coral uh, and Ladbrokes and so on, GVC, and they've had their, their website revamped this year uh, by uh, PH Creative. And their website, for me, ticks all the boxes. It's extraordinary. Uh, and and the, 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 the way in which it personalizes everything for anyone who comes to it is, is, is great. So there's a lot of competition for that award. The next one is Best Small Agency, Cavendish Professionals. Uh, they do... They do the thing that I like to see on all small agency websites. They put the recruitment consultants at the front. Uh, if a candidate is looking for a job in, say, accountancy in, in Manchester, uh, then they want to, uh, to to go onto the website of a recruitment agency and find the recruitment consultant who specializes in their area, who's recruiting for the types of companies they want to go and work for. Uh, they want the advice and the expertise of that recruitment consultant. So a small agency needs to be... Uh, it needs to leverage the expertise and and, and uh, credibility of the consultants that they have, and, and Cavendish do that really well. You can see the jobs that they have. They can see who's working on that job. You can see uh, Joe Blogs, the consultant, all the vacancies that, that 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 he or she is working on, and you can find out their level of experience and and knowledge in that sector. So they do phenomenally well there. Uh, next one, lar best large agency. Uh, it was won by uh, Arm Advanced Resource Managers down in Portsmouth. Uh, Arm have, over the past uh, 10 years, uh, won a stack of NORA awards, uh, and, and the awards are like a small brick, so I think they've maybe got enough now to build uh, uh, at least an extension on their house. Uh, they've done very well, and Advanced Resource Managers continually uh, uh, push the boat to, uh, to, to do more. Uh, best large agency was Michael Page. No one will be a stranger to the name Michael Page, but uh, uh, I don't think they've won this award before, so this is the first for them. Uh, Nick Kirk was the uh, the director who accepted the award for them. Uh, Best Regional Job Board went to Love Local Jobs. They they won this award last year and they won it again this year. And uh, I, I know they are beside themselves to win. Uh, the biggest winner for that award over the years has been S1 Jobs in Scotland, which kind of has a, if not monopoly, they have a domination of the uh, the sector in Scotland. Uh, but uh, uh, obviously, Love Local is much more known throughout the so, UK. So, just uh, to just to jump, obviously, that uh, you know, not blowing my own trumpet, but that was the uh, yeah. that was the area that was the category that I judged uh, on yeah. the first round. Um, and I do remember that website and kind of bringing it. And um, uh, and mm. I agree, yeah, it was um, it was a it was a great little kind of um, kind of regional job board that uh, you know ticked all the ticked all the boxes. And um, yeah, yeah, it was it was it was it was a kind of little bit of a refreshing change because. Local job yeah. boards can sometimes be a bit staid and boring, to be honest, or or, or cookie cuttered is the other one that you can usually see. Yes, you're absolutely right. the the uh, the, the key thing about a, a regional job board is that they they have to, as with as with all websites, they have to address their audience and specifically their audience. So if it's a regional job board, the regional job board has to reflect the region, whether it's whether it's Cornwall or Wales or you know Northeast England. Uh, then it has to reflect that and have information on the job market in that sector. You know what's going on, who's hiring, who's who's contracting. Uh, uh, you want to get a flavour of the the local region when you go to that, and you don't want to have to then go to a load of other websites because you're satisfied with you know the site that you're you're looking at here, the regional site. So. Love Local uh, do that and do that 
really, really well. And I know they do they do acres of work to uh, to continually get better. Uh, in terms of continually getting better, our next award for best specialist job board uh, was won by Versida. Now, Versida are uh, uh, they set out uh, specifically as a diversity uh, 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 hiring platform, uh, and uh, they won I think three, maybe four years ago, uh, best uh, uh, best newcomer, mm -hmm. uh, and they were a finalist for this award last year. Didn't win it, but they've won it this year. So they've they've continually uh, uh, moved forward, and and of course. The age of diversity uh, is 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 very much with us now. Now, problems of the diversity have not been solved and may never be solved. But uh, everyone is at least now aware that it's a thing. And uh, through the diversity website, uh, candidates can find jobs and employers and, uh, uh, and 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 vacancies that tie in with what they're after. You know, companies who are have have. Uh, you know they're, they're certified in diversity for this or that or the other they have a, a team that includes uh you know the groups that they're looking for that they're lgbt uh, plus friendly uh and so on and so on so when you're looking for flexible work uh, for example you might be looking for part-time work maybe certain hours might be a particular location maybe you're specifically looking for work from home i know work from home is is more ubiquitous now but uh, the the ways in which you can filter the jobs that are served to you when you carry out a search means that uh, you can be finding the jobs that themselves are looking for you, uh, and uh, and that's that's a great thing to do. So Versida continually uh, getting better there. Uh, getting close to the end, best journalist job board uh, won by Reed.co.uk. Mm -hmm. Now Reed have often been finalists. Uh, in fact, they're usually finalists every year for this award, and Reed. Uh, in their prime had something like 180,000 vacancies advertised on their site. Uh, Reed began and has an unusual history because Reed obviously, its origins is with the, 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 the recruitment agency. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the earliest days, it, it was a website where they offered free advertising for all agencies to advertise on reed.co.uk. Uh, and of course that meant that every agency, well, they would see a freebie and think, yeah, I'll have some of that. So they would advertise the jobs on there. And in a way, in a way, in the same way as as, as, as Indeed did with free free job adverts, in a way that that uh, that fueled Reed at the beginning. Reed are not now the same as they were then, but that's kind of where they came from. Mm -hmm. uh, Reed is often still confused with the, the recruitment company, but uh, in terms of a modern Go ahead, progressive, uh, continually evolving job board read are absolutely up there and and very much uh, deserving of this award. And as I say, I think this is the first time they've won that award. Uh, now, th there's an award that we give out each year for, uh, which is called the Nora Academy Award. Every company that's ever been a finalist and winner in the Noras over the past twenty years automatically becomes a member of the Academy. It's a bit like the Oscars; you get you, you become a member of the Oscar Academy and you get to vote. So it's the exact same with the, with the Noras. And uh, and what we do each year is we ask now four hundred and eighty seven organisations of the finalists that we have this year that our judges have shortlisted of those finalists, and there were eighty two this year. Who do you think represents? excellence in online recruitment, uh, uh, the most excellence in online recruitment. And uh, and we ask companies to submit their uh, their, their votes for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's the only peer award in our industry uh, where companies in the sector are voting for other companies in the sector. Yep. Uh, so so we had a top three, we announced the top three a week ago, uh, and the top three were uh, in, in alphabetical order, uh, Michael Dowie, who won uh, SME employer, uh, Versida, uh, who won for best specialist, and women in tech, who were a finalist for uh, for for uh, best uh, specialist. Women in tech were the winner of the uh, the Nora Academy Award, uh, and 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 actually, between the two, the second and third, it was close, but uh, it wasn't that close with women in tech out front. So it's only a young organisational, young company, and uh, they've done uh, extraordinarily well. They are, and I stand to be corrected here. I think they're connected to techno jobs which is another job board but mm -hmm. women in tech uh, uh, they, they do uh, an amazing amount of work obviously uh, promoting uh, women in technology stem careers and so on uh, and uh, and and it, it, it could be that you know this is a reflection of the times that we're in uh, but uh, uh, very deserving winners uh, mm -hmm. really good there uh, lastly we had an award yesterday 
uh, that we only you only get we, we only can give out every ten years, which is the website of the decade recruitment website of the decade. The last time it was given out was to a job site in 2010, uh, and that was in in recognition of the work they did from you know for, for the previous ten years. Mm-hmm. In the past twenty years, the winner that we have this year uh, started started by a, a guy who who. I met in the very early days, uh, became good good friends with uh, at Lee Biggins, uh, who before he started a job board was a carpet fitter uh, with his dad's company. Uh, and uh, uh, and he saw what was happening with job boards uh, and, and, and thought, you know, I have an idea for a job board. Uh, and what he wanted to do was build a job board, well, to build a platform where candidates could promote themselves. There was a database of candidates that could be found by companies who were looking for candidates. So not necessarily a job board in itself in the first place, but a, a CV library, which is exactly <laughs> what the company is called. So the CV library was, it came from that place. Uh, and uh, in order to build it, uh, Lee literally found someone in a pub uh, who was a website developer uh, who could build this and and partnered with them and, and formed CV library. So from that really humble beginning, from someone who's not especially you know technically switched on in those days anyway, uh, but had an idea as to what, what the market would want. Now, in the, 20, in the 2000s, CV Library was always up against the big boys, you know, the job site monster, total mm-hmm. jobs, uh, with amazing budgets and, uh, and, and, and these companies who had you know, huge revenues and they would spend a lot on marketing. Uh, and CV Library in those days would employ, as they had to, kind of guerrilla tactics to to find and attract candidates to come and they would offer amazing value for money to advertisers as well but uh they were still a little bit shorter than than the the other big job boards the big job boards are not today what they were then Uh, and i think if i'm honest that's a reflection of being bought and sold a couple of times that can happen to those brands uh they've they've it's not so much that they've shrunk, but uh, CV Library has pushed ahead in the past 10 years. Uh, and CV Library, uh, actually, they, they put out a graphic this morning that showed that, and th- so they, they've won in the past uh, six years, uh, six or five years, six separate awards. Uh, and uh, and I think they now have the full set because they won for best uh, small employer. They've won for best generous job board. They did win the Academy Award a couple of years ago and now uh, website of the decade. And uh, it, it reminded me actually about eight or 10 years, 10 or 12 years ago, rather, uh, there was a mood about at the time. There was a bit of a hubbub on uh, on, on social media or that the Noras are a fix. Uh, it's only Stephen O'Donnell's friends that uh, that win win at the Noras. Uh, we, we know what's going on there. And actually, I, I was a bit well. I was I was shocked and surprised, but I was a bit taken aback. And I thought, could that be true? So I went back and I got the data on all the companies that had been winners and finalists uh, in in the previous uh, previous years. And it turned out that uh, if I if I if I was friends with the people who were running the company, you had a far less chance of winning. <laughs> so I, there must have been something in the back of my mind that went, "Oh no, we, 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 I, I can't." You know, so I was I was giving them a tougher time. I was expecting more of them. So actually, it was the opposite was happening. Uh, so in the earliest days, uh, CV Library weren't really featuring. They, they were always a finalist, always a bridesmaid. Uh, never the bride, but uh, in in the past five years have really come to uh, to, to the fore. And if you're travelling around the country, whether it's in in in, uh, uh, in Aberdeen or the underground in London, you'll see the branding everywhere, uh, and uh, and they they are ubiquitous. They're pretty much everywhere. Uh, and, and and I think, well, the the if you ever met Lee, Lee Biggins, uh, he is he's a workaholic. Uh, and his pers- personality is is riven right through the site and what they do, but I think the 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 form that the site is now is still because he's he's never sold. It's his company from start to finish, and he's he's the last generalist job board owner that's that's independent. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the mission of the site or the way that the site feels is still the same as it was in the beginning, which is, is a, it's a service to candidates. Uh, it's not a it's, it's it's not started and it doesn't run as, a, as a, a way for employers to find candidates, as a way for candidates to find employers. Uh, and that might be a, a nuanced, uh, small difference, but I think it's, a, it's, it's an important distinction to make. Um, so congratulations to all the winners. Um, yeah. uh, and thank you very much, Stephen, for joining me today. Uh, we will include links to everything that we've kind of discussed today 
Uh, probably mm. won't include links to all of the winners, but we'll we'll include links to the uh, the Nora website That's so people fine. can then kind of kind of review and um, and get a bit more of an understanding about how the awards work. And mm. um, hopefully, if they're in any, feel free that they, they think they're in one of those categories, they might kind of want to yep. apply for next year. I've just realised so. Uh, uh, this is a podcast, not a webcast, because much of the time I was behind my camera, there, my microphone, in order to be close to the mic. <laughs> well, I'm sure, I hope that's all right. But then hiding my face has never been a bad thing. Some of it's, we, we do use the video as well, so that'll go out on YouTube. But, you know, um, <laughs> okay. I don't, everyone knows what you look like, Stephen. But, but thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you very much. It's good to be here.